Before we begin this video, I just want to say thank you so much for G Caesar for the pledge on Patreon. You're absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to ask you guys one question. Who is your favorite childhood idol? Me? It's Tintin, the adventure reporter with his dog who takes on adventures in so many different places and time. The animated series is one of my childhood favorites, and it's one of the cartoons that defined my childhood. I loved the ever-living hell out of the characters and the story and the adventure. I freaking love it. It's one of my favorites, and if you're interested, I suggest you guys to check it out too. Now, here's the thing about Tintin. I don't actually find Tintin's character that interesting. I think he is rather bland and in some ways kind of a bit Gary Stewish. I find the adventures and the mysteries and the tales a lot more interesting. Tintin himself is a bland personality. He's supposed to be the hero that the audience is identified with, but he has no sorts of uh, distinct personality other than he's curious, he wants to solve the mystery, he never gives up. He's basically the audience's vessel at this point. Those are pretty bland in my honest opinion. They could have just add a little bit of a tiny bit of spices of personality into it. That and add the fact that he is able to get through a lot of the problems without consequences. <laughs> Even Snowy has better personality than the guy. Tintin is a reporter. He is about as objective as you can get. And it's kind of rare for him to actually show some form of relatable emotion. This is why my favorite episodes of Tintin are usually when Captain Haddock is around because he's certainly more entertaining and 10 times more human. Tintin needs that companionship and friendship from the guy. The only time where Tintin actually shows some form of emotion that is in my honest opinion, strong enough to define his character, was Tintin in Tibet, where his entire journey is just to find his best friend Chang, who got lost in the mountains due to a plane crash. There's even a scene where he actually cries, and that was a moment where I actually cry with him, because he rarely cries. The situation is so emotionally impactful to the point where a character that is just so usually go-lucky happy is now crying and fearful. That episode just shows a lot of Tintin's very sympathetic, emotional, fragile, and brave personality, which is why it's one of my favorite episodes alongside the action-packed The Calculus Affair, the Exploration of the Moon series, and the absolute mind screw that is Flight 714. Now, I love the cartoons. It's entertaining. It defines my childhood. Tintin is my childhood hero. Not necessarily the most perfect or most charismatic, but the one that fills my childhood with delight. This brings us to talk about role models, because in my childhood, I do see Tintin as my role model. I once written that I want to be a reporter like him, and I want to go to my adventures and solve my mysteries and puzzles. It's just your typical childhood fantasy. Now, I want to talk about how role models are formed in children's minds. So ask yourself this, who is your childhood role model and who or what has introduced you into that role model? I personally got introduced to Tintin thanks to my own will. I find the cartoon series CDs prepackaged with batteries and as a result I bought lots and lots of batteries and I watched the ever-loving crap out of the cartoons. They're freaking awesome, it brightens a lot of spots in my childhood. Now notice how the way I talk about my childhood hero does not concern the fact that he is male because that is irrelevant. If Tintin is a girl, I gotta admit that will be 10 times more interesting and instead of my childhood hero, she's gonna be my childhood crush. But that shows to us all that gender does not matter. Kids can find role models in whatever gender they see because what defines a character is their actions, not their genitals. So when I see articles like, why does Disney hate boys so much, all their male characters are losers, I find it so baffling. Disney hate boys so much? Aladdin, Tarzan, Toy Story, Up, Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, Monsters Inc, Finding Nemo, Big Hero 6. <sighs> Let's just get to why this article decides to talk about this. Let's have a discussion about role models and fictional characters, shall we? I don't know the damage to this ad campaign will do to boys' psyches. I am saddened that Disney can't offer any characters for boys to look up to. Um... What kind of ad campaign? How influential do you think these ad campaigns can get to the point where you actually believe that would it damage your children's psyche? I was a Disney child, raised on it all. I fell hook, line, and sinker for The Little Mermaid, Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and even Toy Story. When Pixar started making movies, I was even more enthralled. I even watched all the Disney shows. Many people don't remember their show in the evening called Avonlea, but I do. It caused me to read all of the Anna the Green Gobble series and cultivated my love of reading. Okay, good for you. I don't grow up with a lot of Disney movies, but I do find their films very entertaining. 
let's carry on. So I'm always excited when the next Disney movie pops up. While I'm entranced by the beauty of the gowns and music, my husband is a little more cynical about all this Disney stuff. He was also raised in the Disney movies in the 90s, yet he's seen a downward trend that I have just picked up on. Okay, so there is a downward trend. Can you please illustrate to me what this downward trend is? I'm in line with whatever Disney's doing and I don't see a downward trend anywhere. Maybe at the time they decided to release Brave, but that's because Brave is just, eh. Disney has been trying to push that girls or rather princesses can do anything they set their mind to. The Dream Big Princesses ad campaign is huge on their channels right now. They've gotten a huge backlash from the left saying that they don't want girls dreaming of being princesses and longing for a prince to set them free. They don't need a man to make them happy. So Disney now focuses on having girls dream big. Pretty good, right? Okay, I'm gonna link you to the Dream Big Princess video in my Minds block down below, and I want you guys to see it for yourself. Have you seen it? Good! And I gotta admit, it's a good video. It's inspiring. It sends a powerful message to the girls that you can be anything. You don't have to be a princess all the time, and that's a good message. So, what's your problem? But they're scurried to make girls feel empowered and valued. Disney has left out the other sex. Boys. Um, <laughs> you want to dream big prince ads too, eh? <laughs> okay, Disney senpai did notice the prince and maybe they don't. But here's the thing about Disney. They're well known for their princesses. And Disney is of course going to market their princesses because they just so happen to be more famous than the boys. That doesn't mean that the boys in Disney are ignored or poorly written or terrible. There are boys in Disney that are great characters. Why do you have to make this a gender issue? On Disney, boys get no love. Okay, that's a very heavy blackhead statement. Boys get no love on Disney? Are you freaking kidding me? So you're saying that boys don't get love from Disney because Disney promotes the princess more. No, the boys are there. They're great characters. The Disney princess just so happens to be the most marketable out of all of them. And that's fine. It's freaking Disney we're talking about here. I have only boys. We watch the Disney Channel, but they have noticed that there's no commercial for them. Nothing? Like, there's literally none? No shows for the boys? I don't know about you, but that's a rather harsh generalization towards Disney Channel, especially considering that Disney Channel, at this moment, have shows like Star Wars Rebels, Phineas and Ferb, Graffiti Falls, and lots and lots of Marvel stuff. There's no encouragement for boys to have big goals. Oh, you mean commercials that encourage boys. I thought you mean shows that have boys in there. Boys are completely left out of the equation. There isn't even a picture of a boy in any of their videos or ads. Okay, now you're just lying. Here's a screenshot from the list of shows on Disney Channel. And here's one from Disney XD. Get your eyes fixed or something. Now, I think the article is trying to point out the hypocrisy that Disney is trying to promote princesses and not for the boys, and that's a fair point to make, but I really don't see why boys really need some form of encouragement commercial. Do they really need this sort of stuff? Disney is doing it for the girls because Disney princesses are profitable. Do you really have to demand Disney to make commercials that encourage boys? And yes, I do find Disney getting a little bit more and more girly, but I wouldn't really call Disney not having love for boys just because one commercial is targeted for girls. By that logic, animes hate girls because most shonen animes have boys in it. In a world that is pushing for gender inclusivity, this seems like a big oversight. It got me miffed and made me look at everything under a microscope. Who are the male role models in the Disney movies? Why do you have to push them to the side in order to encourage women? Um, just because Disney doesn't promote them, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. Again, Tarzan, Aladdin, Big Hero 6, Wreck-It Ralph, Monsters Inc., Toy Story, Up, The Incredibles, they don't necessarily have to be like a perfect character or definitive hero figure. They can be just normal characters because the princesses are also human. If you watch Disney, you know that good male characters exist and they can be role models. You don't need Disney to promote the fact that they are. Let kids decide the role models that they want to be and Disney has plenty of male characters that are good and can be role models for kids. Again, just because Disney doesn't promote them doesn't mean that these characters don't exist. Non-Disney movies participate in the same trend. In Bad Moms, you have the unappreciated man-child, the sex symbol, and the overbearing husband who never wants his wife out of the house. It's a comedy movie starring Mila Kunis. Of course the character's gonna act stupid. 
Feminism has produced the hatred and overgeneralization of men. Where are all the John Wayne figures? Gone are the men who can be funny, sensitive, and yet virile and able to save the day. In their place are whiny babies, bumbling idiots, or mean, hurtful men. At least I agree on the first part. Let's carry on. Let's look at the princes from the 1990s Disney films, starting with Eric from The Little Mermaid. He's strong, funny, charming, a little easy to persuade as Ursula shows, but caring and loyal. He sacrifices himself for the woman he loves. This is someone I want my boys to emulate. So there are role models for boys. You're kind of contradicting yourself. Now let's look at the beast. He's mean quick to lose temper, and yet he's lived a life that showed to him his true inner beauty. He learns how to love and defense, not just his castle, but Belle, from villagers on set on destroying everything. He figuratively and literally turns from a beast into an amazing, strong, caring man who yet again gives his life from those he loves. My boys would probably pretend to be the beast, but they see what he chose to be instead of what they had turned into, and hopefully that gets ingrained in them. Newsflash! Characters arc exist. Seriously, if you expect role models to be perfect Gary Stews, you're not gonna get them anytime soon. Now check Aladdin. He's stinky, smelly, has lice and steals, but it's okay because he's an orphan and lives with a monkey in a hovel. While not the worst male character in the film, the stealing and overall behavior leaves so much to be desired, but he tries to better himself and is intensely loyal and selfless to Jasmine, once again intent on giving up his life to save his love. Have you seen Aladdin? Aladdin is a free-spirited, imaginative, incredibly cheerful, happy person. Those are the character traits of him that wins the heart of Jasmine. Yes, he's a thief, he's smelly, he steals, also cunning and deceptive as well. This is what makes him interesting. This is what makes him fun. One of the songs of the movie, as also one of the best scenes in the movie, was when he shows Jasmine the world. It shows a lot to his colorful, spirited personality that becomes a hallmark of the movie. I haven't even watched Aladdin in a long time, and I know the movie more than you can think of. If you have to depend on Aladdin on teaching your kids not to steal, just shows your parenting skills. Those are the princes of the 90s Disney movie. They're the only male characters that you want sons to want to be like. They're the only role models from Disney worth their snuff. The other male characters are the villains or overbearing clueless fathers who bumble around or break all the girls' things. Even in this era, male role models leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, maybe you should go back a little bit. Uh... Uh, you forgot about, uh, hmm, let's see, you have Peter Pan, uh, Robin Hood, the Great Mouse Detective, Lion King, Hercules, Tarzan. If the genders are reversed, it sounds exactly like Anita Sarkeesian winching. <laughs> when Brave came out, I thought it was an instant classic. Uh, stop right there. I know it's subjective, but Brave was, it was, eh. I think it was one of the weakest of the Pixar films. Not exactly Cars 2, but it's still weak. The mother-daughter dynamic was really poignant, but this movie has no strong male characters, no one for my sons to look to. There's the bumbling dad again who loves much, and yet is just easily distracted to fighting and other ambitions that usually hold precedence over his family. He doesn't do much as king except let his wife lead while he follows. If you care so much about your sons having role models, Brave should be the last place you should go to. The suitors and their fathers are pretty much equally disgusting. Then there's the villain who become a bear because he wanted the whole kingdom for himself. The brothers and rambunctious and unruly, so nothing there for my boys to do except say, feast your eyes several times. Thank you, Disney. One movie doesn't have a role model for my sons, therefore screw you, Disney. You're cherry picking at this moment. Frozen was next on my list. It enchanted me with amazing scenes and music. My son wanted to be Elsa for Halloween and watched it many, many times because of her. Yet, in this film, the men were just background noise. The villain, Hans, is the charming man who want to marry Anna but only for selfish reasons and then kill her. Okay, first of all, your son wanted to be Elsa for Halloween. That just goes to show you that role models don't need to be the same gender. And second of all, the movie is focused on Elsa and Anna, you goddamn moron! Oh my god! You're going to Frozen to look out for role models for your sons. You're a bad, bad parent, okay? Your pop culture knowledge is way too minuscule. At which point, I should suggest you guys to leave your sons to decide what role models that would fit for them because you, you clearly have no knowledge of what the hell you're talking about. 
The other man in the story is an Aladdin lookalike, Kristoff. He's smelly, dirty, eats food with his reindeer, and has no other friends. But unlike Aladdin, trolls love him and are his family. And they want him to bathe and look nice, yet he still chose to smell and be dirty. He's street smart, but let's Anna take the lead. Yeah, Kristoff is the brave hot guy. There you go, a good role model for your sons. And your problem is the fact that he is smelly, dirty, eats food with his reindeer, and has no friends? Um, he's like living in a very isolated mountain. Of course he has no friends. He's smelly and dirty? He lives in a hut. <laughs> By the time an actual role model exists, you only focus on the bad traits of the character. Again, Tintin is my childhood hero. He's flawed, he has a bland personality, but I like his spirit, I like his curiosity, and his unwillingness to give up. We focus on the good traits of our role models, the bad traits that they have tends to exist, especially when they're human. This person is asking for poorly written, overly perfect Gary Stews as role models for children. Go back to Tumblr, you'll find tons of them there. When Kristoff finally realizes he loves Anna, he tries to rescue her, but can't. Opposite to the beast, he doesn't sacrifice himself, but watches her sacrifice for her sister. In the end, he's just a comedic father to two charismatic princesses. While Kristoff is not a bad role model, Anna walks all over him, and I'm not sure that's something I want for my sons. Strong women, yes, but weak men in the end don't do anything? No. That's because his role in the story isn't that significant. Again, don't go out to Frozen for positive male role models when Batman v Superman is right next door! Where have all the good men gone? They're not gone. You made them not exist because your role model standards are freaking bizarre. Disney writes no decent male characters for my sons to look up to anymore. If we want to look for male characters, we must look at inanimate objects like toys, planes, and cars. Even in the 90s, that was the case, where a lion was the lead male character. Then stop looking at Disney to look for it and start looking at animes. I I can't believe I say that, but animes are better role models for your sons. Dragon Ball freaking Z, Jesus Christ! Am I the only one who get the notion that the problem is not with Disney? The problem is not with Disney. The problem is you, and you just projected to Disney. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Even the new Star Wars movies offer strong women and very few strong men. Finn is the closest we get, and he's still a coward who doesn't save people. The girl does. Poe could be an option, but he's missing throughout most of the movie. In Rogue One, there's another female read, and I bet the money that the male characters are not even worth mentioning. Oh my god, every single male character that could be good role models that appear in your freaking face, you went full dismissal mode because they're not perfect enough. Just, he's not that enough. He's not this enough. He only appears for a brief of time. When will it be enough? When will you be satisfied? I. <laughs> oh my god. If MRAs are the opposite of feminists, is this what MRAs sound like? I don't believe that. I've seen reasonable MRAs before, but. There are some morons among them, Jesus Christ. I don't know the damage this ad campaign will do to boys' psyches. I'm I don't know the damage this ad campaign will do to boys' psyches. You projecting a responsible mother. I've seen no evidence of your boys getting damaged by this ad campaign. I've seen you getting damaged over this. So I suggest you to stop projecting and lower your freaking standards. Jesus Christ. My nine-year-old has expressed his displeasure about this. He wants to pretend with his brothers, but they must argue about who to be in. My four-year-old usually becomes a girl because there are no characters that would like to be, but the villain, who wants to be the overbearing dad? You're well aware that Disney isn't the only child-friendly company out there, right? Disney owns freaking Marvel, hello? Also, Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, just, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> this person, <laughs> this person has, I don't know what kind of caves this person living in. I wish Disney would see how they're treating boys. Their story suggests boys are supposed to take a back seat to girls and let them do whatever they want. Boys' dreams just aren't considered as important. They don't need to be cultivated and encouraged because they just don't matter as such. Is this the message you want to send to our boys who will soon become men? Sit down, shut up, and listen to the women? No. That's your interpretation of the event. That's how you see it. Listen, when people on Disney are marketing their princesses and try to encourage women, that doesn't mean that they hate the boys. That's your speculation at this moment. And here's my big problem with the writer. The writer here thinks that 
fictional works should also have parental responsibilities. The writer here thinks that fictional works directed towards children should teach values that parents teach to their children. While I agree in some ways on that notion, here's a problem. This is not universal. There are kids show out there that don't teach morals and values and just go for pure entertainment. This is why parents are important. You can't leave Disney to do 100% of your job. The way you worded your sentences sound like you're trying to hand over your parental privilege to Disney or something. Disney is gonna teach moral values that you might personally disagree with because Disney is not you. So it's your job as a parent to teach moral values that you think are good for your sons. Don't depend entirely on Disney senpai to teach them the moral values that you think are good. Saying that you disagree with Disney's moral values, that's totally fine. Telling them what moral values should be taught to children is another thing entirely. Because so far, the problem here is not on Disney. The problem is on you. It's all your problem. This is entirely you. It's not Disney. It's your bad parenting. Women and men should be alarmed at this- Alarmed? Alarmed because Disney promotes an ad design for girls? Now you're into paranoid tinfoil hat mode. My boys are of value and they need to be told that they're special too. They also need to be told that they can save the day just like the women. Did you freaking forget that Disney owns Marvel you- Oh my god. What kind of cave this person is living in? I- I pity the sons of this parent. Instead of parenting them, these people whinge of how fiction works are not parenting their children well. You irresponsible imbecile. Disney, listen up. I'm watching you. Give my boys something tangible. Something for them to emulate that's real. Don't push boys to the side to build up to the girls. Why can't we build and strengthen both? Oh my god, the last sentence is pure cringe. I, I just... It, it, it sounds like the writer is going to go, Hey, Disney! Here's my son. Parent them. Jesus. Your son is your responsibility. It's not on Disney. Stop whining towards Disney on the fact that they cannot give you any good role models or teach values that you personally agree with. It's kind of disturbing that you're only limiting your sons to Disney materials. Let them taste more mature stuff once in a while, like the MCU or something. <laughs> Today I learned that apparently fictional works also need to have responsibility to teach children the correct values of life because parents are too goddamn lazy these days. Today I learned that fictional works should be more educational and boring instead of just pure fun and entertainment. They need to be educational. They need to be boring. They need to teach the children the values that people agree with. And you all wonder why these busybodies want to censor these stuff. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more if you wish. You can support me on Patreon. And thanks for watching.